Hello everyone, my name is Aaron Walsh. I am the director of the Immersive Education Initiative and today it's my pleasure to announce that the ability to create once and experience everywhere is now possible with all Immersive Education Initiative virtual world platforms. This activity has been underway for over two years by the Immersive Education Initiative's Open File Formats Technology Working Group. Today I'd like to show you some of the early results of this group's work. Here we see the Maryland Blue Crab, which was created as part of the Smithsonian Latino Virtual Museum's Virtual Watershed Initiative. This crab was created in Blender, an open source 3D content authoring tool. Here it is shown in real extend, an immersive ed virtual world platform. And you can see the great detail and the resolution that you might expect from this platform. Typically it would end here, however, in that the content would be created for just one virtual world platform, a target that you would develop your content for. But through this activity, we focused on cross-platform content so that you could have best practice of creating content outside of the virtual environment and then place that content in any virtual world. Here are some of the early test scenes showing the crabs inside Real Extend. And here is the same crab in Wonderland. Open Wonderland is also an official immersive ed virtual world platform. And here we have the avatar walking up to take a close look at this crab. And you'll see that once in Wonderland, a different animation is applied to it. In this case, a simple rotate. Although typically we think of virtual worlds as being desktop applications, they can be exposed to the web browser as well. In this case, we'll see Firefox, Safari, and Chrome all support WebGL which is the core technology upon which Siracata is built. Here we're just browsing the web with Firefox, looking at a couple standard websites. And in a moment, we'll take a look at what you might think is a two-dimensional image, but is in fact a three-dimensional object. It's the same crab, Maryland Blue Crab, unchanged, the same file, being viewed now in a web browser. Later, we'll be announcing the Smithsonian project and as a component to that, there is what is known as a Web 3D book, where the learner has the ability to navigate through a virtual world, the watershed in this example, and then click on the objects, the crabs, the opossums, the other creatures in the watershed, and open up a web browser that provides a book of information that can include an interactive 3D object such as we see here. We are now looking at the same blue crab in the open simulator virtual world. You'll notice that the textures are absent. Support for the immersive education open file format is still preliminary, although we expect that in a short period of time, open simulator will fully support the open file format, giving us cross-platform support for open simulator, real extend, wonderland, cobalt, and Siricata. Finally, we see the blue crab here in an immersive cave. This is a new type of low-cost, space-efficient cave, known as a corner cave, that has recently been installed by South Park Elementary School in Colorado. This is the result of the Immersive Education Initiative's Mixed Reality Technology Working Group. One of the driving factors for this work was widespread availability of authoring tools so that virtual world learning game simulator and mixed reality content authors did not have to restrict themselves to only one or two specific tools, that there would be a world of authoring tools available to them. In this example, we see Open Cobalt rendering a three-dimensional car that was created with Google SketchUp and stored in the Google Warehouse. And here we see the same car in a web browser, courtesy of Siracata and WebGL. Siracata in the lower left-hand corner on a standard web browser, Firefox in this case, and Cobalt in the upper right-hand corner. We're back in Wonderland, going through a virtual building. Going to walk through the arches. And here we see that same object in real extend, partially submerged in water intentionally. 
As we continue our tour in Wonderland, we'll see what it looks like in the other platforms. Here is that same building in Cobalt. And also in Suricata. As you could probably imagine, the ability to create your content once and experience it everywhere is quite powerful. It gives you the opportunity to create learning experiences that can be broadly utilized regardless of the platform, the underlying platform that the end user has installed or wishes to use. It also opens up a realm of possibilities to leverage the unique features and capabilities of different platforms. We're back now in Real Extend looking at an opossum that was created for the virtual watershed. If you look closely at its fur, it was intentionally created to be a bit shaggy, and you see it now in Wonderland. And finally, in Suricata, upside down, as opossums are sometimes prone to be. Here we have the same opossum in the immersive cave at South Park Elementary School in Colorado. Although we have a lot of interesting content to show you across multiple platforms, I'd like to end with a very subtle but important technical note. What we see happening here is also a first. It may be hard to track exactly what is going on, but we're in Wonderland, and the process that you're seeing happen here is the uploading of content into Wonderland. Now, Wonderland, of course, supports drag and drop. You could have drag and dropped the content from the desktop, but in this case, there's also a simple upload process using dialog boxes, and that's what we see going on here. Content, 3D objects, and textures, the mesh objects and the textures themselves, are being uploaded into Wonderland. And as we've seen before, the crab renders as expected in the Wonderland environment. But what's really important about this particular demonstration is that we are now in Real Extend, authoring content, putting that same crab in a virtual world in Real Extend. But what's important here is where the crab comes from. All of the previous examples that I showed you, the crabs were dragged and dropped or pulled in individually into the respective platforms. But here, Real Extend is actually getting that crab out of Wonderland. In other words, Wonderland is hosting the crab in its asset repositories, and Real Extend is pulling directly from the Wonderland server, the Wonderland content repository, to enable drag and drop right there in Real Extend. It's the first very significant step towards interconnected virtual worlds where even the low level functionality is compatible, interoperable, and it enables, or is the beginning of enabling, global scale immersive environments. There will be a number of hands-on workshops and presentations at IED 2011, but there's no reason to wait. This technology is available today, and we're providing a number of virtual training sessions so that you can get your hands on it, start creating content, or simply taking content that is in perhaps a public domain, such as the Google Warehouse, and preparing it to be used cross-platform. If you'd like more information, please contact us at the Immersive Education Initiative. We'd welcome you to join us and attend any of the training sessions that we'll have virtually or in person.